Okay, we're here on a Saturday night uh, with Video Wave and Primatech, and we're here in White Plains at Minot Sound Studio. And Primatech has a new video they're coming out with, and we want to find out a little bit about them. Um, I guess. Um, well, I'll go first. Um, basically, we started uh, exploring Primatech as an idea in uh, in terms of trying to understand where. Um, primitive feelings and primitive ideas and primitive energies really were manifesting themselves in our technological environment mm -hmm. as we see it every day. And, a, kind and, of, a, and an art form that you could let go of things that tie you down live. Right. Like just utilize your instincts and get into more of an animal type character and, um, and let that lead the way as your script for performance. Kind of um, the kind of abandon you find in um, you know a, a shamanic dance around a fire is the kind of energy we were looking for. Only instead of you know dancing shamanic around a fire, now you know we have like you know a picture, a camera on us, and we are the images in the flame. As people watch television now, the way they used to look into a fire, that kind of an interface is what Primatech is about. Um, the kind of image that I think of is looking at a distance at a at a um, high tension wire on a hill and realizing how much it looks like a Kachina doll structurally mm -hmm. and, and what electricity means to us is pretty much emotionally what whatever that Kachina doll represented to a Native American Indian. That kind of thing is what intrigues me yeah, about the, the, the world right now. The interface of high tech and The interface primitive. of high tech and, and, and primitive, yeah, primitive. What influences uh, has influenced your music? Any other artists or any yeah, other Gabriel, types of music? Definitely. And, uh, Brian Eno, David Byrne. In the early 80s, when I was just coming out of college doing uh, painting and sculpture, because I was really not a performer at all, so, and um, not even a singer at the time, I was really into listening to um, My Life in the Bush of Ghosts, which was an album uh, Brian Eno and David Byrne put out. And what they did is they traveled all over the world and um, recorded like uh, Muslims chanting. Mm -hmm. And uh, putting, and then they put it to really groovy music, and uh, I really loved all that stuff. And Adamant, exploring the cross between a Native American and uh, a British soldier. Yeah, kind of energy. basically, I really Adrian liked all that era. coming out of the New Age, New Wave era. Yeah. And uh, but I wanted mm -hmm. to go deeper into it and find out what was there for me. So. Uh, the performances were basically dance in the beginning, and uh, as we got going, we had various different characters, and they wanted to speak out, so we started writing music, and he got me into singing. And uh, we also started doing um, uh, uh, rituals to heal the planet. We started doing power circles and focusing. We went to a lot of New Age festivals up through New England, and we went to county fairs and colleges. And we started drawing a circle and definitely focusing with, you know, with images like this, you know, the the man dollar, you know, which basically is just focusing all that energy of money, which can be so positive, forcing it into a positive channel. And look at, I mean, right now economics, such as one thing in the world bringing everyone together, it's money. And, you know, we were all brought up thinking that it's the root of all evil and it's, you know, divisive and all that stuff. And it's obviously not true if you just use it right. And that's the kind of thing we're into. We're into exploring in the media how to present images that will um, make that easier for people to actually bring it into their own lives. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a great time to, uh, to take a look at your video. Let's do it.
obviously a very different type of video. Can you tell us a little bit about what influenced uh, you to make a video like that? Well, in the, um, in the uh, storyboard era, when we were first designing the whole thing, we basically wanted to find images that would work, um, would get across the ideas we were talking about in the first half of the interview. And I really was looking for, all the time, like a kind of a, of a, a penetrative feel to the video. So you went through an image into another image and through an image and through an image. And to me, right from the beginning, that was like what I wanted to explore and what I wanted to see if I could accomplish in this video. And I'm thrilled with the way that that has come about and it's evolved. And um, it's uh, very dreamlike. The song was very dreamlike. I um, you dreamed it. I dreamed it about six years ago. I had this incredible dream. It was, and uh, I I got up real quick from bed and and um, and recorded the harmonies and everything. We pieced it together, and so finally, it uh, it came to be what it is now. We had a four track exciting. in the living room, you know, and he was just up there at five o'clock in the morning, you know, working on the song that he had just had in his dream. It was really yeah, good. that happens quite often, right? Actually, but it. it the song um, 
was very dreamlike in its beginning stages. I'm glad that it came out so dreamlike now. And we shopped around for a place to, uh, to where we could really get a feel of this ancient mood uh, interspersed with high technology. And that wonderful old dam up in Croton was just perfect. I mean, yeah, the water most of the location down. shooting you know, in New York. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, uh, upstate New York, upstate. Uh, not even really considered upstate, great right, metropolitan right, area, but yes. northern, Croton, New York. Chose locations that would look like you were halfway around the world. Right, right. We liked the way it looked like a pyramid in the interface and in, in, the, in the camera, and also um, the way that, um, I mean, I've seen pictures of like Africa that look like that, that Harvest Straw Mountain over there. So we wanted to get someplace that was really magical and mystical. And, and, and the sun also is very feminine. And we used uh, various women that. We know and well, it's male show. too. Let's not get sexist. No, no, it's very feminine, and uh, you know we like to do that in our videos. Bring in the female qualities. Well, of course, yeah. In the, in the video, so it's not an all male dominated thing. Well, that's very true. Important. That's true. Dance seems very important in it, and rituals. How important is that in your performances live? Very important. Um, he's more of a peacemaker live. I go into the into the more dream primitive. Uh, half man, half animal kind of thing where I'm half bird or half deer, but it's all very abstract and I, and I like to keep it very open for everyone else's interpretation, but that's my focus. Well, in order to do anything, you have to have your own point of view and then everyone can have their own right. point of view we of keep what it very, doing. We keep it very open in the performance, right. so it's not tied into any one symbol. And I go off and I do my, I see, I, I use words the way he uses dance, so I go off and I do my stream of conscious Mama Media speeches mm -hmm. and, I, and I address all of these kachinas and, you know, pop and Mama Media and I speak directly to them and channel energies. I sort of channel pop kind of when I'm, that's a way to put it, when that's my point of view. When I'm when I'm doing my part of the ritual rock, and um, basically we just focus on sending all of the energy to intersperse all of the unbalanced yes. energies around us to heal the ozone and to and it's very solve the problems of war and peace and get everybody together into a, a yeah. feeling of um, of immediacy as to what we really got to deal with now and empower the audience too. How does the audience uh, react to it? I mean, well, they love it? it. They love it. I mean, at one point, like you know, we basically you know the audience. Uh, crowd to us and we paint their faces and I mean we really get into a lot of audience participation it's one of our favorite things about it always has been basically watching the shaman dance around a fire is the image that we always try to bring with the added high technology aspect mm. of, of um, that dynamic we like to incorporate all kinds of cultural uh, styles well, we do our own primatech thing to them so it's never one style it's never specifically Indian or specifically Native American just the way television always, you know, like you can turn from channel to channel and you can get, you know, Middle East and, you know, uh, Plains Indians and, um, you know, I mean, every, every conceivable kind of culture, right, like through to Hollywood and even Hollywood doing variations on those old themes and all that stuff. That's the way our brains work. And so now I want to sort of, you know, find a way to shamanically weave it into a, into a whole. It seems like a lot of fun. It seems great. And we're looking yeah, forward it is. to more it's videos and, and to see a lot of your performing. Thanks. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interview.